real quote explanation for why he suspects Marcus. Because a liar knows a liar and you're a liar. Yes. I'm a liar, so I know you're lying. Marcos needs to be like, okay, but that means you don't know I'm lying. Right? <laughs> I want to... Hold on, I got it. Ask me what I would say if yes. you ask yes. me if I'm lying. <laughs> what? <laughs> the surgeon's a mother. It's the woman. It's the woman. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamecast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I do that for a living as a solid response to go fuck yourself. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. We got an uh, apocalypse movie. I've, we've never done one of those, so that's exciting. <laughs> that's, it's nice to once in a while step outside of our normal style. But it's the J-dubs, so cool. Yeah, it makes it different. You got to admit, man, this movie was different. <laughs> It sure was. It was different. It sure was. You can't accuse them of being unoriginal. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm yeah. going to say, one of my favorite new genres on our show is the genre of, did you just fuck with us and pick a random, oh, no, there it is. There yep. it is. <laughs> just barely. And of course, you've already heard him, but I got to introduce him anyway. It's in the contract. Sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Or am I? Yeah, oh, well, so spoil the whole From ending. From whom? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Lockdown 2025. It's the story of Jehovah's Witness writers doing the story of the apocalypse for 90 minutes and forgetting about their whole thing during that entire script and then being like, Fuck plus J-Dubs, plus you be a J-Dub. Be a J-Dub there. <laughs> it is, though. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the mini morality plays of Tyler Perry, but you hate how they don't wrap up which religion you should be in the last four and a half <laughs> seconds, sure. you will love this movie. I do. Love this movie. I that's true. loved this movie. This is a great <laughs> piece of cinema. That's correct. Film. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's, a, I, I certainly had more fun than I normally have. Yeah. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. I'm going to go with best worst. I want the food in the movie the whole time. <laughs> right. This, it was very difficult to watch because I actually had to, they make like, these beautiful barbecue ribs at one point and they keep sh I feel it felt like it was like targeted at me like the the camera would just be like hey, there you go Heath ribs <laughs> back to the movie they made ribs at you yeah yeah oh, right they looked great yeah also they're never they're never plot relevant I mean I'm sure we'll talk about it but they're never plot relevant so there's just like these weird sweeping shots of delicious juicy barbecue and then they're like anyway so my son's actually a space alien who comes from the planet Jehovah's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So I was good. There are so many. I like. I had so many ideas that I crossed off eventually. Be here, but I ultimately went with best worst attack helicopter. <laughs> we'll get there, guys. It is. I laugh so hard and so loud and so long at the goddamn it. It's not the right size. It's just. It's awesome. It's if you saw it in a video game, you'd be like, "Come on, give me a fucking break." <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of things we weren't supposed to laugh at, but definitely did, I'm going to go with best worst tragic moment. Okay. Listener, <laughs> last night before Heath had finished this movie, he was like, so how's the ending? How's the ending? And I was like, I'm literally not going to say any words about it to you, except that I stood up on top of my chair to laugh higher in the air for some reason. Yeah. That's how hard. <laughs> I ended up with an Oh Captain, My Captain moment for this movie at the end as well. You like predicted that very well. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, with, with the apocalypse right around the corner and all, we need to get the ads in quick while we still can, but we'll be back in a hurry with all the after effects that are Lockdown 2025. Okay. Uh, let me just double check. Give it a give it a give it a give it a give it a. So good. 
All right. Nice. Oh, so, how's my stash? Is it good? Perfect. It's identical. Listen, right? Identical. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, guys, 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 what's uh, what's up with the outfits? Uh, like you don't know, we're getting ready for Raycon. Yeah, obviously. We didn't even know it existed till this week. Because what, what are you talking about? Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point. So you can build great habits without breaking the bank. You mean it's not a convention where everyone dresses up like Ray Comfort and says their favorite Ray Comfort quotes? No, no, it's not. Ah. Whether you're looking for a pair of everyday earbuds, low latency gaming headphones, or a speaker with a battery that'll last all night at your next party, Raycon's got you covered. And yet, Raycon started at half the price of other premium audio brands. But have you actually tried them? I'm using them right now. I love their noise isolating and earbud tap functions. They make listening to books on the go a breeze. That does sound good. So are you ready to buy something small with a big impact? Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash gam. All right, Heath. Guess we better get changed, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or we could see if there's a Miami Vice convention this weekend. You know, don't want to waste them. So we could use them. Good thinking. Perfect. Good thinking. <laughs> All right, guys, time for the first ever writers meeting of Lockdown 2025. Now, I'm sure you're all aware that we want this movie to be a moving and compelling piece of drama that will motivate our viewers to hear the words of Jehovah. Yes, totally. Absolutely. Yes, Jehovah. Yeah, okay, so, uh, sorry. I got it. Sorry, you, you got it? Yep, yep. What we do is we swear and we make this movie as violent as possible. Ah, uh, okay. I'm just... I'm just not sure that's going to really target our audience. Oh, no, trust I mean? me. Mm -hmm. They're going to love it. Most of the movie will be about a degenerate gambler with heart problems who hates his family. And, and, and then he finds Jesus. Nope. Yeah. No, he does not. He does not. No. His house gets attacked right. by hacker Riddlers, and he kills most of his family in a shootout with his wife's lover. What? Because of the, the hacker... Riddlers? Is that what you said? Strangely enough, no. No, the shootout um, is just an unfortunate coincidence with the hacker Riddlers. Un unrelated. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. That, that, that sounds terrible, frankly, but, 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 but how is that going to help people join the Jehovah's Witnesses? I mean, nobody wants to die in a cop suicide after killing most of their family in a panic caused by hacker Riddlers. And, I mean, besides, what else are we going to do? Just... Describe our religion. Ooh. Okay, he's got a point. I mean, right? Uh, yeah. So, hack hacker riddlers is that what you said? Yeah, they're hackers and the with riddles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to start off with a John Wick opening. Like, right? We meet our hero, and he's all bloody and next to dead. Yeah. And so he's got like a bullet wound right in his stomach, and he's walking out. Of his house, walking out the front door. Onto his porch. And it's Chico from Pool Hall Junkies, by the way. The uh, the actor. Is it? He plays yep, the character Chico. Okay. Pool. We actually, we had him in uh, Day After Tomorrow, too. He was one of the actors in that. Anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, he's, he's a veteran. Return, returning gam favorite yeah, Chico. returning gam favorite. Hey, and let me say, let me say, too good for this fucking movie. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a good actor. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone in this movie is somehow too good for this movie, except for one actor. And I think we yeah. all know that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So he walks out and he's like, how do you think the world will end? And my first instinct was like, well, I'm pretty sure I know it's going to be flooding caused by the people who like this movie and their voting patterns. <laughs> yeah. But it's the apocalypse. That's the introduction to the apocalypse is going to happen. Yeah. Well, the narration continues. It goes, where would you go if the world was ending? Yeah, cut to me at the grocery store rolling around on the grapes. Yes, <laughs> I wrote the weed store. I don't think that's the answer you're looking for, movie, you know. <laughs> so anyway, so then we, we back up, right? We're going to get there. But we open up in a, in a nice house in L.A. And dad's got to pee, but teenage daughter is in the bathroom. Okay, this is such a jarring segue. Yes. It was literal apocalypse a second ago. And then yep. right to like, I want to pee. I have to pee. Right. I have to pee in the good bathroom. Not I need room. I like to have the good one. It's an emergency. Yeah. Really weird. 
Yeah, no, th- th- this movie can't decide what it is for a really long fucking time. Because for the first like 15 minutes, I'm like, oh God, this is all poop jokes and fart jokes done poorly. And then it's a fucking apocalypse movie. And then it's a family drama. And then it's a horror movie. And it, yeah, so, but we're in, we're still in the scatological portion of the film, right? So dad gets to the bathroom before him. And, and then he like <sighs> listens at the door. Yeah. That's not. Does he ask her if she's perioding in there? Yeah, he does ask that. Yeah. 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 So he goes upstairs, but the toilet up there is clogged, so he can't use that. And we know because it just shows us a bunch of shit. Uh, just a toilet filled with shit. Okay. But here's the thing whoever did the Foley for this particular thing, right? Whoever did the set design for this particular thing. They should go to the hospital. That's not what shit is supposed <laughs> to look like. That's not the color like. that poop is supposed to be, guys. I don't think we're taking Eli's word about this, but that is true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was eating my usual 12 pens a day, and they told me <laughs> I was supposed to create the clogged toilet. Yeah, maybe the one good thing that came out of that movie is somebody convinced that guy to get a colonoscopy. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. exactly. If there was an in memoriam of the set dresser at the end, I'd be like, yeah, no, I get it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but so dad opts to pee in the sink, which we listened to for quite a while. Lucky us. And then we cut back down to the downstairs bathroom with the daughter. As turns out, she was taking a pregnancy test, which kind of a dick move when you know dad's got to pee. Right? Like you just wait until like, like, it's like you got to wait like a minute or two for that thing. Come on. Just let him pee and then do your... Whatever. Make him go upstairs. Have it pee into a, a, an empty glass. You're fine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. He could just go out in the backyard. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So then he goes in to wake his lazy son up, right? This is Junior. And we're going to meet Junior when dad walks in and drops a bunch of shit on the <laughs> ground to make a lot of noise to wake him up. Just for that. It's so sad. Yep. He's like, Junior... And then like, blah, 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 blah. There must be a better way. I don't know why I carried this <laughs> entire barbecue in here that I've dropped. It appears that he brought a fishbowl full of dishes to smash for yeah. comedic effect. <laughs> yeah. So what this is, is this is the barbecue grill that Junior was gonna, supposed to put together before he went to bed last night, damn it. And he didn't do it because Junior is a lazy piece of shit, right? Okay. And he brought it in to show it to, like, you. I feel like Junior would have understood with words Yep. The barbecue. And he, <laughs> yeah. like, no, this. Look. And he throws it up in the air. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Noah, you mentioned that like Junior's a lazy piece of shit and his dad sort of rides him about it. That relationship transforms and grows throughout the movie, right? It's not just that <laughs> exact beat over and over again. Well, dad seems to be sad when he's dead at the end. <laughs> so, spoilers. Yeah, and, and and he's like, you know, but, but he gets up and he's like, you know, you're a lazy piece of shit and I will physically abuse you if you give me enough temptation. And he's like, all right, dad. And then dad leaves the room. Junior goes back to bed. And just in case you're thinking, well, that wasn't humorous enough, we close on a quick fart because those are always funny. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Guys, hold on, hold on. Was that scene like fun? I was going for a funny scene. Was that, fu- you know what? Fart. <laughs> Nailed it. Okay. Right, yes, on. Next scene. exactly. Just a fight, just a fart out of nowhere. Anyway. Classic. So then, okay, so he goes to check on his wife. Farting. She's doing a sweaty, ass-shaking bass dance, right? Yep. Twerk aerobics. I, I'm on the same program now. She's in week two. I'm already at week four and a half, but like, you know what? That's why you have such similar bodies, you and her. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and as she's doing her exercises, she gets a text and she answers it real suspiciously, right? Because like, dad walks in at that point and she's like, oh, I was texting my boyfriend. What are you, what were you doing? <laughs> right? As he walks in. So that's important. You know, a little foreshadowing. And then there's a knock at the door with some church people. Right? Not just any church people, but J-dubs. And not just any J-dubs, but like the greatest door knocker J-dub I've ever seen. This, Ooh. So the, yeah. They show up. There's two of them. But the guy. he, mm-hmm. he the, the old, old guy. guy. Yeah, like yeah. 95-year-old man. And <laughs> go to the door. Open it up. And he's like, okay, it's 
It's door knockers. Please leave. Babylon the Great has fallen. The moon has darkened. And he like steps in the door. Yeah. Leans all in with all this shit. Right. Yes. And dad is like, okay, you know what? You know what? You got me. This is amazing. Like this is the greatest salesman I've ever seen. This guy could sell a fucking bag of sand. Could sure, absolutely. At a toy yeah. store. Like no Couldn't problem. He? So yeah. <laughs> we could have been successful. So, yeah, but he runs off the J-dubs and then he goes in He's uh, to watch some TV with his younger son, Evan. But all the channels have static, which hasn't been a thing for a really fucking long time. <laughs> My favorite feel like the movie would know. <laughs> also, when, when he discovers the sun, the sun is watching the static. He's not <laughs> he <is>. scrolling through <laughs> the static. He's like... I don't understand this snow-based programming. <laughs> Dad, very I'll avant-garde. admit it, I'm slightly <laughs> bored. Down in front, down in front, I'm watching. <laughs> and then, and the, but then the TV's like, Dad checks all the channels and they're all static. And then it flips to this weird, like, German student film that's on every channel. And the kid's like, this is a boring part of the movie. And the dad's like, it <laughs> is. You want to go play basketball? <laughs> it's, fucking, it's fucking like the blood rights, you know, early fucking psychotronica. And the kid's like, I'm bored. I want Peppa Pig. <laughs> <laughs> he totally is. So, okay. So meanwhile, mom is upstairs unclogging the toilet and I don't want to blame the victim here, but this is not a, given the amount of shit that is in this room on the walls, floors, sinks, etc. You're not doing this correctly. <laughs> yeah. The only way that she is doing the correct job is if a shit monster just burst out of the toilet <laughs> and she beat it to death using that plunger and we're catching the tail end of that. That would have been reasonable. Yeah, absolutely. She, okay. She had a literal sledgehammer with her. She had the snake thing. Yes. And she's like, oh, this isn't working. And then she picks up a sledgehammer. And I was like, is she going to just beat the shit out of this toilet full of shit and then fight the shit demon that comes out? <laughs> but no, I, th- I guess she just like used it to push the snakes some more. Yeah, this is an apocalypse movie. If ever there was a place for a Golagothan, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but 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 she looks outside. She's uh, Dad is out there teaching the kid to, to shoot hoops. And she looks out there and there's a mysterious man watching the dad and the son play basketball. A cop, right? <laughs> okay, I have to mention this. The man is mysteriously watching. And then, like, they forgot the credits and they were hoping to get half, like, homework credit for it they just put one last credit next they to him. totally like, did and also like Steven six Wimmer minutes Wimmer. after the last one <laughs> yes. oh, oh, oh you know who did the film editing <laughs> see I told you we'd work you in buddy <laughs> uh, really good Jehovah as himself okay got it yep. got it, got it. So, Perfect. All right, all right. <laughs> so okay so then we cut to barbecuing this is the first time Heath's best worst is going to show up right oh, oh. so good it is, let's say, the most pleasant shot of the movie is the food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and then meanwhile, so we get the pregnant daughter. She's on the porch with her boyfriend. And she's like, you know, kind of milling about. And she goes, look, hey, hey, very important. I got to talk to you. I missed my period. The instant that last word is done, we have we hear a gunshot. And we cut to dad, like, waking up from a nightmare. Because this movie is insane, He's on one of those inversion chair things at the time. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, he's having a heart attack on his sex swing. <laughs> you got to talk to your doctor before you use a sex swing. I mean, adamandeve.com, but you know. Yeah. Do they have sex swings for people like me who are bad at cardio and stuff like that? Like, do they have like beginner ones? <laughs> they have sex swings for everybody, Heath and right. Cue the music, Morgan. Where 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 would I go? Yeah, right. They I have so. sex swings for everyone. Adamandeve.com. <laughs> Started as a pro. Recharging you keep going, Noah. I'm doing the podcast. So, I'm going to do yeah, my no, music. Yeah, no, no. I, I will. This is an independent <laughs> sponsorship. I'm the only one making money from this one. <laughs> so, yeah, but so he's having one of those attacks from Pi or whatever. He grabs his pills, takes his, his uh, heart pills or whatever. And then the news comes on and says, don't forget, there's a $1 billion lottery drawing, which is weird number for it to be that night and dad's really excited about it he might win the billion yeah and he has a laminated lotto ticket that he does see here. yes so obviously they just had like a prop and they didn't, like, they didn't want it to get degraded i get they didn't want like yep the paper to get messed up so they <laughs> laminated it to be a prop <laughs> and it's so dumb the way we see it because he sees the commercial 
for the lottery that he's in. And then nobody else in the room. He just takes the laminated ticket out of his pocket to show to the camera. I am playing this lotto. Look, cut. Yeah. Move to the next scene. Right. Well, right. But then the news continues. It gets so much dumber because the person on the news is like, and residents right now of L.A. are experiencing. And I. this is a fucking quote from the movie. A supercharged electrical rainbow storm. <laughs> Get the wow. fuck out of here. Look, even if that was a real thing, and it's not, but even if that was a real thing, you have to go with the different name if you're a movie. That's <laughs> yes. too dumb. Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> supercharged electrical rainbow storm is my Rush Techno cover band. It cannot yes. be your science thing in your movie when you're trying to do a science thing. Heath, I hate to correct on air, but it is, in fact, your drag name. Okay, super. <laughs> well, it, it's both, and I, my <laughs> drag persona can be in a Rush Techno cover band. So, Sparkle Donkey Tsunami Storm. No, absolutely not. How much would we all pay collectively to be in the room when these barely sentient J Dubs were like, "Name a bad weather," and super everyone was charged, like, Rainbow, "Super su electrical." One word from everybody's answer. That's sparkle how sparkle donkey. Settles. It's a compound. Yeah, compound word. Sparkle donkey. I said it. <laughs> Speaking of which, check out sparkle donkey tequila. The daughter says, "Mom, did you see the sky? It looks all Act One out there." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those clouds spell out omen. You think that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we should just go inside. Doesn't matter. And as and then everybody starts sitting down at dinner. We get this weird where we already are establishing shot, and then everybody <laughs> finishes sitting down for dinner. We're back. What? Who? Who are you talking to? You said we're back. Yeah. We're back. The movie. <laughs> But yeah, they're all sitting down for some ribs and some corn on the cob. It looks fucking delicious. And so good. The lottery drawing starts. Dad pulls out his laminated ticket, doesn't want to get barbecue on it, right? Now it makes sense. Now it makes sense, Heath. Obviously. Okay, fair. He knew he would be having barbecue. I got excited here just because I'm thinking to myself, all right, if this guy wins a billion dollars in the lotto and then the apocalypse happens like right after that, that's pretty funny. Like that, that is, I that's, that's a pretty good start. That's what I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so they're making fun of him for playing the lottery. And I get it, right? That's easy to do. But but just as... Oh, and we should also mention that Todd, the jackpot guy, absolutely going for it. Todd right? fucking yeah. Williams. <laughs> Todd Williams met with his acting coach 62 times in preparation <laughs> for this line. He was he was bouncing up and down on the on the heels. He was ready. He, you're Todd no. Fucking will he never yep. broke character? Yep. Killed it. He never. He's still Todd Williams. Whatever this actor's name is, <laughs> no small <laughs> so, roles. Uh huh. Yeah. So and, and and then so he's about to give us the lottery numbers, but then the emergency broadcast system cuts in right in the middle of the damn drawing, and and everybody's phone gets an Amber Alert because they don't know specifically what an Amber Alert is. No, someone kidnapped all the <laughs> emergency. Yes. I also, I have to point this out because the movie's bad editing does something so funny here. He's watching the TV and then it cuts to an emergency thing and then it's on him for a little too long and then he's like, oh man. So the, <laughs> the slow reaction makes it seem like he thought the lotto numbers were an emergency broadcast. Like, okay, they really mean it this week. All yeah, right. right, right. So yeah, but after a long while, they finally come out and they're like, a national state of emergency has been declared. Martial law has been declared. There it is. Habeas corpus has been suspended. <laughs> okay. But he, they say that. And then one of the characters in the scene is like, habeas corpus, that means the right to a trial by jury. Yes. Just to like catch us all up in the audience. And, and look, I get that not everybody knows what that means. And, and, and if it, any point in the movie, the fact that habeas corpus had been suspended was relevant to anything. I can see why you might have to set up what that means. But the way you do that is you have the six-year-old ask, right? You have Evan go, sure. what is habeas corpus? And somebody says, it's the right to a trial by jury, you know, or whatever. No, right? an adult is just like, that means the right yes, to right. a trial in by jury. We all agree that we all knew that. I'm just, I don't know why I said it, <laughs> but we all know that now. I wanted, I wanted Still. it to keep going, right? And of course, a jury is that big box full of people when you're charged with drug possession. You remember the box, don't you? A box is a shape that is just... <laughs> so, so and, and then a transformer blows and the power goes out. Right. Except 
the TV, right? Which which now has a count a clock counting down from ninety minutes on it. <laughs> yeah. Can I say I am very impressed by the selective power outage that the apocalypse manner. <laughs> yeah, it was it was the power out except for a very strong blue light from somewhere well, right. in yes. their mm-hmm. house. Yep. Yep. Also, if there's a 90 minute countdown on a TV like that, I'm getting really like I'm doing something and they're like, "Oh, that's that's a number that's going down." That's no big deal. They decide not to eat the ribs because of it. That's insane. Th- that's insane. Indy- it felt like a trick to get Dave the dragon to eat something that was then going to be like <laughs> the wool dasher <laughs> mizzle. And it's there's puppies, but they turn into like they shoot you in the face with like a fireball. <laughs> so and then they check their phones, the countdowns on their phones, too. And Junior, the older son, he goes, it's the Illuminati. And I wrote in my notes, you're damn right it is, Junior. You're damn right. <laughs> oh, I got excited. He started just naming words to give Heath an erection. He's like, population control, new world order, <laughs> FEMA coffins. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I had not heard I had not heard FEMA coffins before. Oh, I looked it up. Nice. It rules. It's insane. <laughs> it's the first source. It's whatever you think, it's 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 crazier than that. The first source, by the way, like, hey, big shout out. The first source, of course, Jacksonville.com, because (laughs) not a good start. You know they had to get out ahead of this in Jacksonville, Florida. First result, Alex Jones shows up in your house to explain it to you. No good. (laughs) Yeah. But this this is the conspiracy theory from 2014 that Barack Obama had ordered one. Billion billion. <laughs> a billion. In case he cut everybody into three goddamn pieces and wanted a different coffin yeah. for each one. You remember you remember Jade Helden 15 that definitely was gonna happen? When mm-hmm. uh all of the Walmarts were gonna get turned into like FEMA camps or whatever, and we're yes. gonna have a civil war, and Obama was gonna put it down and then murder all the insurrectionists, probably in Walmart basements. He would need like a billion coffins already set up. So he bought those is the FEMA coffin theory. Obviously. Well, but now in his defense, though, the, the, the TV is going like, you know, everyone stay in their homes. We will shoot all looters on site. OK, I don't I don't feel like they announce that even normally if they that's are not going to do that. It doesn't seem like a thing. They would, you probably don't announce it. You just do it. Also, we're raping all the jaywalkers. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so, and and Dad argues with Junior about whether it's really the Illuminati or not. And I'm like, it's a movie, man. You have no chance here. <laughs> I was just like, everybody shut the fuck up and let him finish. I want to hear about his Illuminati theory. Right? Like, FEMA coffins is delightful. What else he got? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, but Junior runs upstairs to get away from all of it, but he climbs out on the roof to look at their After Effects rainbow sky, which is, it's so bad. The effects in this movie are so hilariously bad, especially because at the end of it, someone looked at that effect and said, nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) It couldn't have been sillier if it started like blinking, eat it, Joe's across its face. Like, there it is, the old apocalypse, eat it, Joe's. (laughs) But meanwhile, little Evan has a bad case of the movie coughs, right? Oh, man. The kid is milking his COVID almost as much as Heath did. Am I right? <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, this guy's a pulse of the kids a coughing. Marcos, that's the boyfriend. That's the pregnant girl's boyfriend. He's like, hey, you know what? I should probably go somewhere else now. And But she won't let him go. She won't let him go outside because of, you know, the... Apocalypse. There's a supercharged rainbow electricity thing going. Storm. It's a pretty yeah. big deal. You gotta you gotta watch out for that kind of shit. But everybody goes outside anyway. The whole neighborhood is standing out in the streets looking at the sky. There's this great fucking line where somebody's like, Where are the moon and the stars? <laughs> but and the implication, right, is that they've fallen because this is the apocalypse, but like it's just really cloudy. Like they, they show, yeah. they, they pan up and it's just super cloudy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably behind those clouds, dude. <laughs> I love the idea that the stars would fall is part of the thing. Like in their heads, yep. it's like, well, the stars are up. Yep. And down is us. We're at down from them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So stars would be here on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then a car accident occurs nearby off camera. Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> And Glenn, I, I, was he supposed to be like the driver that just crashed or was he supposed to be hit by the car? It's not clear. I the, the presumption, the presumption of this movie, this is the mom's brother. Yes. And the way they tell us that is four scenes from now. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. After we've all written, who the fuck is Glenn in our notes in increasingly <laughs> large fonts? Yeah. Yes. They make a big deal. They're like, Glenn's here. And I was like, Glenn is here? Who the fuck is Glenn? Make, just don't give him a fake name from a sketch. Like uh, fucking Alan's here or whatever. You know, get out of here. Yeah. But so, but Glenn is coming up and he's like giving him like he's yelling Bible words at him. Mm -hmm. Right. He's like, it's finally here like a thief in the night. Right. Yeah. He says a bunch of weird things. Thief in the night. And then he's yelling about demons. It's going to mm -hmm. rain demons on y'all. And everybody's like, hey, hey, yeah. OK. Can you just uh, like talk normal? Tell us like the prophecy or whatever. Yeah. Can you just give us to? like in a normal just English word? Regular. You, you flew yeah. over here and almost <laughs> died driving. The mom in signs is trapped against the tree. She turns and she's like, get a load of this guy. Am I right? <laughs> so, <laughs> a little on the nose. I mean, <laughs> water. The aliens are allergic to water. <laughs> Spoilers. So meanwhile, uh, <laughs> I'd like to apologize to everyone. I just ruined the absolutely terrible movie science for. <laughs> you should have been a patron. You're welcome. Yeah. So meanwhile, the crowd like so. So Glenn wanders off. Glenn curses dad, curses Clarence, the main character. And then he wanders off. And then everybody like stands around like sharing relevant plot conjecture. Yeah. Doesn't somebody ask him? What's happening, too? Yeah. He just, like, ranted about nonsense for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> One other guy in the crowd's like, hey, uh, crazy yelling guy, is this uh, definitely a chemical weapons attack from maybe another military power? <laughs> like, he was going to say, like, oh, yeah, no, I was just checking in with the Pentagon, like, a minute ago. I'm Glenn from the Pentagon. <laughs> it is that. Anyway, demon rain, I should probably tell you about. Too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody's like, but what should we do? And Glenn says, pray. And then he walks off, and I'm writing in my notes, like, weren't we just doing poop jokes? Like, there are poop jokes right above this in my notes. <laughs> I can swear there were. So the family all runs back inside. Okay, if if Glenn was like, I got a shit. I got a shit right now. <laughs> I just have to bring him inside. Uh, upstairs, you, you're going to need a snake or a sledgehammer. Downstairs, <laughs> so there's, there's somebody in Sledgehammer it. is provided. So yeah, so the family runs back inside. Dad goes upstairs to get his shotgun. And as he's coming back downstairs, he has like another one of his heart condition attack things, right? He falls down, grabs his chest, has to take one of his pills. Yeah. And then he he takes Junior aside for a pep talk. He's like, hey, hey, I need you not to be Junior tonight. Yes. Okay. Don't, don't be, be Junior yourself. Just, you know what I'm, don't fucking suck. Just yeah. try not to be a fuck up for at least 12 hours in your whole life. Can you do that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. In fairness to Junior, dad just loaded up a shotgun to like fight the falling sky with a shotgun. That's what we just watched. Yeah. <laughs> so he's not doing great either. No, that's fair. That's fair. I just want to point out that uh, I wrote in my notes, Noah says this to Heath and I sometimes. It's very hurtful. We don't like it. <laughs> Buses, trains, airport security. I'm tired of hearing this. Can speech. you guys be like other people for like just today? <laughs> don't, don't have a who can yell bomb the loudest contest. <laughs> so, bomb. I win though. I always win. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We firmly established that this is going to be a movie about waiting for something to happen. So while the movie does that, I guess we'll do a sketch or something. But we'll be back with even more of the waiting that is Lockdown 2025. Bomb. <laughs> Bob. Okay, so the landmines go here Exactly, this side of the fence Hey guys, uh, what's, what's with all the barbed wire and stuff? Oh, me and Heath are getting free pizza By digging tiger traps into the driveway? Uh, among other things, yes Yes, we are uh, Okay, I already know I'm going to regret asking about this, but how? <laughs> 30 minutes or it's free, man. Nothing in the rule book about not stopping that with boiling tar. Yeah, we actually checked that twice. That's official. Mm -hmm. the, well, guys, guys, if you want great food delivered to your door at an affordable price, why not just try HelloFresh? Oh, what's HelloFresh? 
With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I don't know, Noah. Food delivery in a box? Is it good? It sure is. And HelloFresh now has 40 weekly recipes to choose from, so you can say bye bye to your recipe rut and treat yourself and your family to exciting new flavors every week. <laughs> the ad made Noah say, Bye bye, just now. I know, he said right? It. I, okay. I had he said to. It. I had to leave it in. He said bye bye. But Noah, what kind of meals are we talking about here? Well, how do recipes like falafel power bowls, seared steak and potatoes with Bernays sauce, or Southwest pork and bean burritos sound? That sounds awesome. Yeah, they are. In fact, HelloFresh sent us a box to try, and I loved how quickly it unpacked and how easy it was to cook, even without any culinary training. That's why I know Illusions personally endorsed this product. All right, Noah, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Go to HelloFresh.com slash Scathing65 and use the code Scathing65 for 65% off plus free shipping. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash Scathing65 and use code Scathing65 for 65% off plus free shipping? Love it. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Hmm. I guess I should let the Burger Places delivery guy out of the stocks then, huh? Wait, so what, why is he in the stocks? Got my mustard. Oh, okay. You know, that's reasonable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, President Obama? Yes, Tyler. Uh, come on in. I, I wanted to ask about this order, sir. It seems to be a bit of a mistake. Did you order one billion FEMA coffins? FEMA coffins. I sure did. Just uh, go ahead and put that through. Okay. okay. Uh, do you mind if I ask what they're for? They're for the great culling, of course. Did you not go through the orientation? With the baby blood and the binder. And the, and the binder, yes, I, I did. But but why does America need one billion FEMA coffins? We, we don't even have a billion people. Not yet. Not yet. But you see, after we start poisoning people with the food and the water and the air, other people are going to start coming here. Be, because we won't be poisoning people here? Oh, no. We'll be doing it here. Okay, so why would... You know what? It's fine. I'll, I I will just place the order. Great. Hey, Tyler? Uh, yes, Mr. President? I feel like I'm the nicest guy you'll ever work for. I, I, th I think so, too, sir. I, I think so, too. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Dad and Junior looking out the window at the rainbow sky effects some more. They expected us to be really impressed by those, I guess. Yeah. They bought two of those sparkly lights from five below, Noah, two. Yeah, so that's <laughs> 10 below at that point. Yeah. So, yeah. And so dad's like, don't worry. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's probably just the Mexicans and they'll keep it to their own neighborhood. Okay. Okay. That was insane. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't even understand. <laughs> Neither did the other characters. They're like, hey, dad, it seemed like maybe you like took a swing at a racist thing that didn't even make sense. Do you want to try <laughs> more time? You know, or, like, Mexicans what are you always doing? have in their rainbow sky <laughs> apocalypses. Okay. I grew up in a shitty, shitty town just outside of New York. Is there, I, I should know about this, but I don't. Is there a version of racism <laughs> about which neighborhoods do well in an apocalypse scenario? <laughs> Burn I themselves down? <laughs> They're the Jews building a public park again. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so it's, and somebody's like, uh, the, the daughter, Crystal, she's like, Mom, what was Uncle Glenn talking about? That thief in the night crap. And Mom's like, Oh, I'd have to get a Bible. And look through it, and it's like, it's okay. Junior, the Illuminati nut who talked about FEMA coffins earlier, knows that biblical passage by heart. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> hey, shout out to the J dubs for doing the totally obviously crazy parts of the Bible, like the one where it says that the apocalypse will be instantaneous. Like childbirth. What? You know that thing that takes nine months and they swell up like a fucking balloon? It'll be instantaneous like and that. And even just the climax takes hours and hours and hours. Yes. It's so. the speed of a poppy seed, which is the smallest speed <laughs> the smallest in thing existence. That, yeah. So, and then Crystal's like, wow, mom, do you think this is a religious movie? And she's like, there's a lot of poop in it in act one. I don't think so. <laughs> And then dad's like, all right, so are we going to just ignore the fact that Glenn is a crackhead? 
You know, like, I mean, the guy who came to us to warn us about the apocalypse and mom's like, hey, hey, he is an ex crackhead. He is now a longshoreman. OK, <laughs> what? How is any of this helpful? Why would they introduce that? It does not come know. back. Glenn is done in the movie. We're, we will never hear of or from Glenn again. Yes. Also, I'm sorry. He became a longshoreman. Yes. Yeah. Long. Sh that was the job you all came up with. They were like, okay, so he's an ex crackhead. What do you guys think he does now? Haberdasher. <laughs> <laughs> a milliner. We could even make him a milliner. Yeah, so. He would fight Marlon Brando on the docks. <laughs> what? So, okay. So they all stare at the ticking clock. Not only is that the action in the movie, it is the goddamn plot. And, and Marcos is like, Hey, what do you guys think will happen when it hits zero? You guys want to speculate? And I wrote in my notes, I'm hoping the credits. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we should point out, by the way, that there's really no effort made to like make the runtime of the remaining runtime of the movie match the remaining time on the clock or anything. It's just sort of random. No, there will be scenes where it's like second perfect, a la no peeing 24. And then there'll be times where it's like one minute left and there's a 70 minute scene. Yeah, uh, <laughs> 30 seconds left. Yeah. And this is where the movie is like, hey, do you guys want to do the movie elsewhere for a minute? And they're all like, yeah, maybe we go to Glenn's house. I feel like that's a nice house, right? Yeah, right. yeah right. Just get a good, good TV. Longshoreman after all. Yeah. I think he has HBO now. He has Longshoreman money. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, they're like, the whole movie can't be in the same damn house. So they go to leave, but just outside, we hear Junior describing a, a very harrowing scene sure. <laughs> that we don't get to watch. There's a whole movie happening outside of the window uh, yes, that we don't and see. and he's yet. telling us about it. <laughs> the Martinez is next door. They went to leave, and somebody confronted him out on the street and shot him to death. Yeah. So no leaving the house. And then these blue people called the Navi, I think. And there's unobtainium. I don't know. James Cameron's there. This is an expensive scene that I am telling you about. Oh, if only you could see this battle that's going on right yeah, now. Let right, me tell you, it's yeah, exactly. pretty epic. Five armies. So, but now Junior wants to run out and get a into the firefight and save the Martinez's. But dad has to restrain him from her natural heroics or whatever. Right. No, Junior, they'll just burn down our neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and dad's like, like it or not, the whole damn movie is going to take place in this house. And they're like, really, the whole movie? And then he's like, one exterior shot from here on out. I swear to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay. So mom carries Evan, the sick kid, the sick younger brother back upstairs. And then we, we stare at their stupid fucking color changing sky graphic for uh, a little longer. Yeah, and we get the clock at 60 minutes left to mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And I got excited here. I was like, oh, the countdown is almost lined up with the movie now. They're like three minutes off or something like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then I made a resolution to myself. I said to myself, okay, if the countdown moves past the movie... I'm stopping the movie when the clock is <laughs> That's like Whichever comes first is what I'm doing. That's the rule now. You only get one countdown clock. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But so, okay. So they're all sitting around and then suddenly Crystal hears something. It's nothing. <laughs> right? Like that she hears. Because up until now, there's been sirens and helicopters going by and gunshots and everything. And all of a sudden, it all stops. And she's like, hey, what do you think happened? It'll turn out that nothing in particular happened. They just had to start this scene somehow. Right? Yep. Do you guys smell that? I think the cops are gone. And that's it. And it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, and yeah. And dad's like. Oh, I guess there's no problem at all. Let's let's check out those lottery numbers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he tries to go back to normal way too fast, <laughs> so fast. Way too. Fast. Have you ever seen that couple who have a horrible fight and they're all cry and red eyed and they're like, "Okay, so you guys we're we're doing categories, right? Okay, here we go. <laughs> One word. <laughs> Prime Minister of Utah from 19, and you're just like, hey. No, everyone else left with the cops. Your relationship is having an apocalypse. You can just yes. step away. Yeah. So yeah, so dad goes back to the table and he's like, let's have those ribs now. And I'm like, we can see the clock. Those things have been sitting out for 40 minutes now. At least throw them back on the grill for a minute or something. Or right? eat them either way. I don't care. You need to eat the food. It looks amazing. <laughs> Regardless of It still does sit now 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, right. No, I'd eat okay. those ribs. This was my, I think I'm going to say my favorite moment of the movie. 
They show us the 51 minutes left here on the clock. They flash back to it for a second. They keep doing that. Mm -hmm. 51 minutes. And then Marcos, the boyfriend of the daughter here, he says, what if the countdown was to mark something? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I laughed for so long <laughs> Like, like the As movie people were like what? We should remind the audience That the countdown is a thing for something And he's yep. like It's a thing for something maybe Huh? <laughs> <laughs> This is this Heath. I don't want to. I don't want to throw stones here, but this is the look at that guy that happens with you in public every six minutes whenever we're together. And I'm like, look at that guy. Like, look at the hat. And you're like, what guy with the hat? That's you, but for the apocalypse. That's what's happening right now. So, yeah, but then I make friends with the hat guy. You do if he's a waiter. Yep, or not. So and then Dad goes to finally eat a rib, and Heath's like, finally, somebody's gonna eat some of the goddamn food, but. Marco slaps it out of his hands. He goes, wait, what if the food is poisoned? And then he goes on, right? He's like, but what if the water is poisoned? But what if all the things that we could touch are poisoned? I'm like, yeah, better not breathe any of this air now. Sure. Well, that's the best part is because he goes, look, you could only poison people through the food or the water. And I wrote in my notes, you um, you forgot the air. And in fact, the one time we did poisoning, we went with airborne. You yeah, know, so, because you're, so because right, you're not right. always eating involuntarily. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Most people aren't always eating involuntarily. <laughs> Present company excluded. Yeah, exactly. I got excited, though. I was like, oh, is the plot about like apocalypse cordyceps now? Because that's <laughs> right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If Nick Offerman shows up right now, I'm on board again with Fuck this yeah. movie. hundred percent. Oh, how dare you? How dare Fuck you? Yeah. Too soon. I'm not over that. <laughs> it was an amazing performance. It really was. So good. Can we watch that? Let's watch that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, but then dad turns the gun on Marcos's shotgun. Maybe Marcos is the apocalypse. I I don't, I don't know because that does not a sentence that makes sense in the English language. But yeah, that would, that's his, he's like, you know why the sky is a rainbow. (laughs) Here's his actual real quote explanation for why he suspects Marcus. Because a liar knows a liar, and you're a liar. Yes. <laughs> I'm a liar, so I know you're lying. Marcos needs to be like, okay, but that means you don't know I'm lying. Right? <laughs> I want to... <laughs> Hold on. I got it. Ask me what <laughs> I would say if yes. you yes. ask me <laughs> if I'm lying. <laughs> what? <laughs> The surgeon's a mother. It's a woman. It's a woman. (laughs) But yeah, so dad's like threatening him and he's yelling and the girl's yelling for dad to calm down. And finally, in an effort to calm down her father, who is currently holding a shotgun to the chest of her lover, she says, but dad, I'm pregnant. Right. She had to defuse you're the apocalypse by being like, I'm pregnant the best. I, no, that's how I stopped knowing Heath from fighting. I get it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it, it works. No, it does. It does, though. But it turns out he kind of is the apocalypse for a second. Yes! Right! Yeah! No, it, it, Dad's like, I'm gonna shoot you. I know you know who turned the sky rainbow. And we're like, oh, wow, this guy's really losing it. And then Marcos is like, yeah, no, I do know who turned the sky rainbow. You got me. I am the <laughs> apocalypse. I'm the apocalypse. Alright, no, let me, let me explain. Let me explain. But let me walk into a different room to explain because we don't want the whole movie to take place in the same room. <laughs> He's about to introduce the hacker Riddlers, which I love so fucking much. This we'll talk so about stupid. them in a second. But he starts it by going, it started as whispers. And what's funny is the last thing that was said was that she's pregnant. And I was like, oh, like an ASMR thing? Because I get it. <laughs> I get it. So yeah, right, right now. Uh, so, yeah, but but then so they, they walk into the other room and he's like, they call themselves the VOTV. And they're like, do you want to take a second shot at that acronym? He's like, nope, I sure don't. Nope, I sure it is already on the page and that would require additional keystrokes. So, no. Yeah, it is the voice of the voiceless. The voices of the voiceless. And according to the movie, they're Antifa, basically. Right. Yes. No, no. Look, well, let's go over what they are. They're a religious hacker group. They are weed smoking anarchist hackers. Is yep. Okay, well, old hippies. More specifically, they are a network of old school hippies 
who didn't cut their hair is mm-hmm. one part of it. Uh, mm-hmm. Vatos. Vatos who keep the lokes and the tats. Not clear on some of that. Mm-hmm. We're not here to speak to lokes or tats. What's a loke? Don't know. Do okay. not know. Okay. But Vatos with those, they, they've kept them. Mm-hmm. Crypts and Bloods who never stopped sagging their hat. Don't think the hat is what they, they, do they sag the I haven't hat? heard of a sagged hat. That's not how I would have used that. But also, engineers, chemists, drug lords, teachers, and the guy outside of Home Depot. What? Okay. I think exact words. The dude standing outside of Home Depot was the end of that list. All of that was an exact quote. That's who the voice of the the VOTV are. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'd start singing YMCA and planning (laughs) the apocalypse. I feel like they all met up outside of the Home Depot and he was like, hey guys, what are we doing? And they were like, oh yeah, you know, you can come too. You can come too. I'm a, <laughs> so I'm a drug add lord himself in at the end. Yeah, and also Hawkman. Yeah, right. But you tell people where light bulbs are, huh? Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we, gotta, we got something for him to do, right? <laughs> Ooh, you still sagging that hat? I see you over there. Cool. Cool. It's so low. Also, the Crypts and the Bloods. I feel yeah, like that would have some working tension together. involved. But working their together. It's, it's, so, yeah, the apocalypse right, well, really yeah. changes things. Yeah. Coming together for the apocalypse. So, so, but Marcos is like, I got to go check on my family. Maybe they'll know more. No idea. And she's like, oh, I'm going to go with you. But then he and her dad, in other words, both of the men that own her, tell her she can't. So she can't. Right? Yeah. And then he goes, I just, little little note, I have to point this out. He says, Tu familia es mi familia now. And the the subtitles say, bracket, speaking foreign language, bracket, now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, sorry, that, that tickled me. Also, kind of ruins that moment because the kid's like, es mi familia now. And he means like, oh, you're my family now because you're holding my baby. And dad's in the background like, yeah, whatever, fucking familia. More food for us. Nice. Opens the door for him like he was the fucking band at the Oscars. He's like, yeah, anyway, so you were leaving is what you just said. <laughs> so, wow, cool. Why don't you just uh, get the fuck out of here, burn down your neighborhood yeah, or whatever you guys just do. Skipped. <laughs> so, all right. So Marcos leaves and then mom Starts yelling at Crystal for getting pregnant. Yeah. Right? Mom's mad. She's like, we bought you birth control. And Crystal's like, okay, not really time though, mom. It's like literally just looking over. Yeah, 32 minutes left in probably the world. Yes. So maybe you just uh, relax. And mom is like, you have your whole life ahead of you. And Crystal's like, two minutes. Uh, Ibid, it's 31 now. What are you talking about? Yeah, that loses a lot when you're in the... uh, the last half hour of the apocalypse. But then dad decides to come in and I love, this was so close to my best worst. It was almost best worst analogy because I love this so this fucking much. Greatest. So good. Clarence <laughs> goes, honey, life is like a puzzle. It's played one piece at a time. Right. But he's, yeah. And he's trying to string that together into how that's like dealing with the world now, even maybe in the apocalypse. And he tries to keep going and he's like, well, uh, so yeah, one piece at a time is what the last thing I said. Uh, you're you're not allowed to move the, the pieces after that. Even, right. well, even if, what? Like, let's say a piece gets stuck because you jammed <laughs> it too hard. What, then it what would be work like, is the puzzle doing in his analogy? That's my question. All games are played one piece at a fucking time. <laughs> it's a one time puzzle. And it breaks the rest of the... <laughs> it, it, it Statistically, <laughs> people who get their puzzles unstuck don't regret She's, it. <laughs> are we on the edge? She's like, well, you know, you could move a puzzle piece if you get it in the room. He's like, you know what? I just, we'll go with the different... Uh, life is like a box of chocolates. I, I really wanted him to be like, what the fuck are you talking about puzzles for? <laughs> <laughs> and then... And this, honestly, this was one of my favorite shots of the entire movie. He goes, yes. don't make the same mistake I did. And the camera flash cuts over to Junior. It does. And Junior's like, oh, shit. Did the camera just turn to me? Fuck you. <laughs> Life is like a puzzle. You should start by separating it by colors. Nope. Nope. That's bad. Oh, no. <laughs> so. mm, no, she's getting away from me. So, okay. So with the clock now at 35 minutes, Dad looks back out at the color changing sky effects so the movie can go, huh? We spent a lot of money on these. So, and then we get our singular exterior shot, and I love it so fucking much. Marcos is running through the, the chaos, and we're chasing behind him with shaky cam, right? Yeah. He's doing a lot of hiding behind trees. Mm hmm. And like, clunk, 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 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he runs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's an old chemist lady that we saw during the, you know, Bloods and Crips speech. We see the old chemist lady like putting on her Antifa hoodie and coming after him. Yeah, and just to just to uh <laughs> throw throw you a little detail. The Antifa hacker, Riddler, Vatos, Bloods, Crips, Engineers, Teachers, Home Depot guy uniform is <laughs> The hoodie, and it has a big upside down question mark on the front. Yeah, right. Like the Mexicans do, <laughs> like the Riddler, like the Riddler, like the. Yeah. Oh, you think they were going for the? Okay, do they do any riddles? No, no, no. That's that's all of it. I would say don't have a uniform. Yep. Yeah. No, that's there pretty important for your anonymous apocalypse starting group. And then, of course, we get Noah's best worst <laughs> as he is running. He gets <laughs> shot at by a. Attack helicopter. <laughs> He's running down the middle of the street. Suddenly he goes from, from trees to like, ah, fuck it, I'm going down the middle of the street where there'll be plenty of room in the sky for them to put this graphic. And we get this fucking attack helicopter graphic and it's the wrong size. It's getting like way closer to him, but it's not changing sizes fast enough. It's shooting at him. It's missing him on both sides. Terrible aim, this helicopter. <laughs> yeah, if you stand right in front of a helicopter, it can't get you. <laughs> right, because it's, yeah. yeah, it's vision is like based on movement. He just yeah. hovers straight up with a Harrier jet, him and Arnold Schwarzenegger all of a sudden. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, but yeah, we flash away. Like, he's in tr danger. Don't worry. He will survive his fight with a helicopter. We won't find out how. Right? And then we come back to the family, right? They're they're gathered around Evan, the, the son with the, with the movie cough, and he wakes up for the first time since, like, early act one. And he says, hey, I'm going to be an uncle, aren't I? And everybody's like, wow, how did you know that? Did you have some kind of divine revelation? And he's like, no, I was, lay I was, you said it in my presence. I was laying here. I, I can still hear through a fever from here <laughs> next to you. And just then, Junior's like, hey, dad, everybody's got to be getting sick of this blue lighting effect. <laughs> Don't you have a generator that you bought from Y2K out in the shed? Or sorry, out in the garage? That's an important distinction, right? Sure. And dad's like, yeah, let's let's go get that Jenny. Yeah. And I really, I like that he he's using Jenny there. Yeah. Yeah, right. I've never heard that used for generator. Keep it light. But yeah, and so, and mom's like, I don't want you going out there. And I'm like, ooh, is it going to be an action-packed gun-toting trip to the shed? No, mm -mm. they're going out to the attached garage. Yep. What did mom think was going to happen between the pantry and the garage? <laughs> okay, I got to say, it feels like the movie couldn't decide if zombies were part of the movie. Yeah. And they eventually oh, cut okay. that idea. Mm -hmm. But this moment was still in the like, maybe zombies part of the script. And they're just like, all right, well, you know, we, we'd have to like go outside for a second. And then that's Interesting. kind of the scare while they're in the garage, too, is them being like, OK, dude, the zombies are going to hear us. Just Yeah, be quiet. Be quiet. Why? Yeah. So, yeah. So they start looking through all the junk, trying to find that generator. Dad apologizes for the f whole first half of the movie. Junior finds a CB radio. Okay. Right. Very important. He holds up a flare with a headphone jack hanging out of it. And he's like, here's a CB radio. I said so. <laughs> no take backs. Yes. And and he's like, all right. Yeah, fine. <laughs> and then dad finds a box of nostalgia. Right. He, he's going to look over all of the fun, you know, because it, <laughs> it isn't a zombie movie. Really slowly when they think maybe zombies Oh, my old Lego set. Let's build the entire Death Star right now. <laughs> Father and son. They literally pause the entire movie so he can look at photos of the other actors. He's like, ah, look at me. Yeah. So much hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, so, but Junior finds the generator. Dad asks him, he's like, hey, did you know that your sister was pregnant? And he's like, yep, sure did. And he's like, is that going to be relevant to the plot in any way? He's like, sure won't. Nope. So nope. we cut back inside. Junior's hooking up the CB radio to a car battery. Mm -hmm. The TV takes a break from the countdown to show some like shots of the destruction that VOTV has wrought over the world today. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, the daughter is fluent in truck lingo. Okay. Yes. Thank you. This was a weird moment. I almost had best worst CB radio doing. Yeah. So... Junior first gets on the radio and he says something normal and she pulls it away. She's like, idiot, you have to say it special. And she's like, breaker, breaker, turning one, Scorpion five, the blam, gum. And like, 
do truckers only respond if Thank you talk you. like this that? The, thing be, do they, uh, the implication there is that there was a trucker on the other side of the radio in the apocalypse hearing someone be like, hello, is anyone out there? We need help. And he was like, didn't say breaker, didn't breaker. Say breaker, breaker. <laughs> so I don't know. It doesn't count. You're not talking. You have to say over. over. If somebody just says breaker once, are there sticklers who are like, not yet? Right. Mm -mm. Right. I'm, I'll tell you, I'm half listening. You have to say breaker, <laughs> breaker. <laughs> So yeah, and then, but but just then they hear a window break upstairs somewhere and we cut up to Evan's room. Somebody's going into Evan's room, gun first. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a, it's a man in a bird mask. Bird Rasta demon? Yep. Bird Rasta demon? Do you know what would make this scene and this next sequence, this whole next sequence, like more suspenseful and what, what uh, impactful? That? Birds, <laughs> if the man in the bird mask was not having a full-on asthma attack oh his God. entire time. <laughs> he snorts so much. <laughs> it's, uh, look, it's me in 2020 and 2021 just being like, oh, no, stop the spread. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this is great. I love okay. having cloth in my mouth most of the time. <laughs> Picture Eli Bosnick trying to sneak stealthily into a house, into anything yeah. with a bird mask over his face that's too tight and the eye holes aren't lined up with his eyes. And he's <laughs> this guy in particular is moving his head as if an actual bird. Right, he's yep. doing his pigeon. He's getting his money out of NYU. Yeah, he's just like a too much method. Like he went too hard. And he like became I guess. a bird. He saw what Todd Williams was bringing to the table. And he was like, <laughs> "Fuck, I gotta up my game." So. <laughs> he feels like he ate an entire plate of fettuccine Alfredo while perched on the roof outside, <laughs> and then realized what a mistake that was as a play of activity. <laughs> so. oh. Eli Bosnick as a ninja. We need to incorporate yeah. this for. I want this always. Fuck yeah. So and then, by the way, I should point out that the whole long scene of him walking around in the house, looking everywhere, everybody's hiding shit. Dad has a shotgun and has a drop on the guy the whole fucking time. Could kill him at any minute. Right. He's just like, well, I want to give him a head start. I want to be a sport about it. Right. At one point, dad is sneaking up behind the bird guy who he has the complete drop on and he tries to cock his shotgun Sneakily, he's like, Chick. and the guy's like, "Was that a shotgun?" And he's like, Chick. Chick. "That's not how they work, by the way." Too, so he just pulls it, and he's like, "Shit!" When I let go, it's gonna make the other click. Fuck you! No, no, see, no shotgun. I'm a just... bag of chips. What? <laughs> Well, yeah, I was gonna say because yeah, luckily the question mark goes away over his head before the other like click of the shotgun, right? Because the bird guy <laughs> loses track of him so quick. He's like, "Well, that wasn't that was only half of a shotgun could chunk." So I think I think it should be fine. <laughs> this mask is really hard, though. Ah, it's a lot. So he goes down the uh, down to the basement where that where the the rest of the family is, right? And and Junior has a knife, but the bird guy has a gun. <laughs> So that doesn't seem very good. Junior seems pretty confident when this happens, though. Fair. Like the, the guy with the gun shows up and Junior's like, hello, guy with gun. I have knife. Shall we dance? <laughs> Tied. <laughs> we'll see who ends up the better yeah. unshot person. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's this great moment because, again, they, they obviously were like, Grandma, can we use your house? And she was like, sure. So. They're too close to the stairwell. The guy has to walk down to get there and threaten them. Mm -hmm. So they could just stab him in the foot, but they don't. Instead, they politely wait for him to get down the stairs. Yeah, it was Fucking nice of him. One hand on the banister like he promised Aunt Lucille. Well, and keep, uh, yeah, keeping in mind that the guy has no peripheral vision. He's in a bird mask, right? Are you an evil guy in a bird mask? Yeah, yeah. just give me a second. Give me a second. I'm, I'm, coming, coming, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Said you Maybe to, not. Said Maybe to, yes. For safety. Safety first. I will tell you. Yes. So, yeah, but but at the last second, right before he's about to shoot Junior, dad shoots him with a shotgun and he dies. Mom runs upstairs to check on Evan. Feel like he's fine now that the bad guy's got a chest full of shotgun pellets, but fine. Yeah, you know, you got to check on your kid. Well, she tries to run upstairs. So <laughs> the bad guy gets shot and she's like, all right, I'm going to run upstairs. I just got, I just got to squeeze past you really quick. Oh, yeah. You're, you're <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, it's it's hey, very small. Uh, Clarence, you're still very right. small basement. It's not like watching Heath use the bathroom on an airplane. Just <laughs> I'm going to go. Sorry. I'm going to go left. I'm going to go to my left. I'm going to go to my left. We, it would both be left for us. Left for you. Left for me. Left for you. Left for me. Ah. So bad guy takes off his bird mask. He gives him some revelation quotes, right? Dad says, go get some towels, Junior. And I'm like, to clean up the blood, you're just going to use 
Your towel? Okay, fine, I guess. What are you going to, you got to do something. He also does the peaceful eyes shut thing. I feel like you don't do that when you murder a guy, right? Who is trying to kill your family. Yeah, no, just yeah. let him stare. I don't think you do like a over the river, my friend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sweet, like two sweet, coins. Sweet, sweet, dear prince. <laughs> yeah, right. And then Junior comes back and he's like, you idiot, don't bring the white towels when you murder a guy with a shotgun. Everybody knows that. She's like, oh, yeah. Weird comedy beat. <laughs> murder. Yeah. He says, I take back being proud of you. Question, who was this guy? He's just a bright guy breaking into their random house. Random burglar. He just had some a random burglar. This is a completely unrelated to the rest of the plot. It was a random burglar in a bird mask. Random burglar in a bird mask. It was a guy who was like, hey, we're doing apocalypse shit. Running around robbing people in a bird mask with a gun is pretty apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that was it. Okay. After I'm done with the grapes, I might do that, Heath. Don't <laughs> yeah, right? my dreams. <laughs> Don't kink shame. <laughs> Fuck the shit out of those grapes. So, okay. So then we get a quick montage of everybody waiting for the movie to get on with it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Which it eventually, it resolves on mom and dad. They're looking as bored by this situation as I am. And then dad's like, well, I better interject some, some drama in here, right? And he goes, so honey, was our entire lives terrible? And she's like, yep. Every minute was hell. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, you don't you don't love to hear that. Yeah, right. So uh, and he's like, I'm gonna be different. And she looks over the clock, there's 18 minutes left. She's like, Really? You're gonna be different for the remaining 18 minutes of existence. <laughs> yes, is what he says. He's and and she's like, Well, no, I want a divorce. Yeah. She says divorce, right? Yep. Yeah. So, like in the basement in the next 18 minutes? <laughs> in the next 18 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, bird mask guy. Any chance you were a judge? <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry, let me take those coins off your eyes. Were you a judge? <laughs> and then this, this, this actor absolutely goes for his fucking Oscar. Right. This whole conversation, this whole monologue that he does where he's got the pictures of her from back when they had still joy in their lives or whatever. He just absolutely devastates this monologue. Yeah, he nails it. Nails it. You could tell he auditioned with this because it's by far the better thing he's practiced the most. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we need a minute to emotionally recover from Clarence's monologue here. So we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Can the, the, the clock run out in time? <laughs> Find out the answers to literally just that question when we return for the anticlimax to the second power ending of Lockdown 2025. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And that's when I said blueberries, more like boo berries. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Eli, Eli are, are you okay? What? Oh, no, I'm fine. Like, uh, gibbity, gibbity. I'm just saying you seem really down. Have you talked to a therapist recently? Psst. More like a pair of wrists. Nope. Nope. Right? Dude, no. you should try better help. Oh, sorry. I was trying to give him that one. Uh, I'll do it. What's better help? If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, better help is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. Man, that song's grape juice. It it, it does sound great. If you want to get closer to your best self, therapy can help you get there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. Member belt. Swidoo. Okay. All right, everybody, welcome to the first meeting of Cune Anonymous or whatever the fuck name we have in this movie. As you know, we're an underground group of hackers made up of, uh, hold on, let me just check. Uh, we're made up of old hippies and vatos. Does, does anybody know what a vato is? It says vato it's, here. It's, it's Spanish for man. Oh, okay. So uh, we got old hippies and Spanish men. Uh, anyway, how do we want to take over the world? What are we doing? Um, Texas ties. T Sorry, what? You know those ties? They're like strings. We should wear those. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Thank thanks for that. I'll write that down. 
A long ponytail. I have one. We should all have one of those, too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sorry. I, I was thinking more about like a technology thing. Those were good, but like a tech thing is what I'm talking about. I, I have a home pod. Me too. I also have a home pod and I like it. Hey, Siri, play play Janice Chop. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, like a hack attack. Like we hack something. I can hack. Oh, great. Awesome. So tell me about. It. Well, Usually, it's when I'm on the elliptical in my basement, but sometimes I just loudly clear my throat like this. Here, give me a second. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, yeah, I do that, too. I do that, too. Uh, all right. I, I really hope the apocalypse fills in the gaps for us. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. Ah, ah. <laughs> You're right? <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Crystal and, and Junior finally getting a hit on that CB radio. Right, This is where they hurt here from Lone Wolf. Right. Yeah, the, the pouty trucker got enough breaker breakers over over. <laughs> he was like, oh, okay, she technically said breaker the second time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's trucker for parlay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think Junior even has a little a little book that translates out of trucker. Like, why would they have that book? And why would they have been able to find that book? Okay, couldn't they just be like, hey, Lone Wolf, apocalypse, maybe just regular talking <laughs> just, for this one time no. now that we have you and have said breaker. The breaker. CB radio is a code. So, it's a credo. Are you maybe, di do you want our help? Because you're dying? If you talk normal, no. we'll help. Right. I don't know. I'm in a, he, this is the so good. He goes, I'm in a chicken choker. And he looks in the book. He looks in the book. He's like, oh, yeah. yeah, it says he's in a chicken truck and that he flipped over. Yes. And it's like, wow, what an incredibly specific thing to have in your <laughs> CB radio dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb because as he's explaining this, the guy just keeps pausing because they don't they don't even say like, hold on, we're translating this into normal people talk or whatever. He just keeps pausing long enough for Junior to provide a translation for us. <laughs> no, that'd be chapter eight, the other paragraph. Hold there on, you go. Hold on. Yep. Chicken truck. A little bit further down, Junior. He goes, I need, I what I really need is some of that cactus juice. And Junior looks that up. I'm like, come on, man. You know what the fuck he means by cactus juice. <laughs> you guys need to say over when you're done. <laughs> Are you over? Yes, I want that. Over. So, but Junior says, like, he's like, hey, man, while we've got you on the line, can you please tell us the plot? Right? We're already in act three. And he's like, it's the fever. And he starts giving, like, these ominous warnings about how he's been try driving all week trying to stay ahead of this terrible fever that's killing people and, and making them violent rage monsters. Right? Right. And then that mob shows up where he's crashed or whatever, mm -hmm. his chicken truck or something. Yeah. And Junior, and what's what's her name? The sister? Crystal. Right. And so he's he's crashed there in his chicken truck or whatever. And the mob is showing up now. The like violent fever mob of the apocalypse. And Crystal's like, get out of there. <laughs> and he, he's like, he's oh, like, I wish, yeah. wish I thought yeah, of thanks. that. That's helpful. <laughs> oh, you didn't say breaker, breaker. <laughs> Can we talk about him blowing his last line so hard? They were like, okay, so Craig, great job on the set so far. You're doing nothing but voiceover. So your last thing is really traumatic. You're going to say, adios, little mama. And he's like, got it. Idios, little mama. Yeah. No, please, God, <laughs> give me a second take. Nope, idios nope, just is what we're going to put in this yeah. movie. I, I just like, so I wrote my notes. I'm like, wow, it sounds like Rick is involved in some sort of interesting action sequence off screen. I bet it's really exciting. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, not since the Martinez's has there been <laughs> such stunning practical. There's a literal ghost army attacking the castle that I'm in now. That's right. <laughs> So 54 inch penis. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, 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 we cut upstairs to Evan. He's feeling fine. Now his fever broke. He's not sick anymore. Did his sickness affect the plot in any way whatsoever? Why? No, thanks for asking. You guys were sure that kid with fever was going to do like crazy violence thing and just like beat the family to death with the <gasps> arms of them that he tore up. Right? Like he was clearly going to be a fever guy apocalypse i didn't 
think that because I just didn't think that movie had it in them. You know, that just was too interesting. I, I figured that the kid was going to come down and watch the clock with them some more. <laughs> but I just have him not have a fever. Have him have something else if you're going to use fever later for your. Yeah. But honestly, your optimism gives me hope. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, the, what happens is crazier, to be fair, to the movie. Right, right, yeah, because then it changes genres again, right? There's a knock at the door. It's the cop. It's the cop that came by and watched <laughs> him help his kid learn basketball okay. from before. And it turns out that's mom's boyfriend. Okay, I didn't recognize him from the, the quick thing before, so I was just seeing a cop being like, hey, folks, uh, I'm just here to uh, exposit to main characters is what they told me. Is that you? <laughs> I've been to several houses that didn't know. Oh, it is you. It is you. Okay. Homeland Security said, and this is crazy here. This is the plot now. Mm -hmm. Homeland Security told me that 15 cities around the world have been systematically poisoned. Over the last 30 days, yes. Over the last 30 days. So 15 exactly? Yep. How? Do, so this is like God or the Illuminati or whatever. They, How do they pick those 15 cities and why exactly 15? There's a committee. Great question. Yep. Right. And so everybody's like, Dad, will you stop fucking suggesting Sheboygan? He's like, no one will ever expect it, though. Yeah. Yeah. We could just do 16. <laughs> And is it like one of those, is it like, are they working on like a, a congressional Congress thing where all of a sudden like fucking a city in Idaho with 150 people yeah, right. gets poisoned? It's, yeah, like, right. Really? Not fine. God damn it. We haven't done anyone in the Midwest. Yes, yeah, because there's no people here, Craig. You know what? Just pour. <laughs> on your way to Chicago, pour some fucking poison by the road. Can we calm? No, it's fine. <laughs> That's why we got rid of the Iowa caucus. You fucking suck. So yeah, but he explains that the cities aren't getting poisoned. And then dad, Clarence is like, all right, yeah, but are you, are you fucking my wife though? And he's like, yeah, well that too, that too. Yes. Also, so, that. Uh, so also, yeah, no, I'm, I was doing the exposit thing, but up above nothing, I'm the long lost father of the son too. Uh, I found that out today, just separately during the apocalypse. I was checking Yeah, uh -huh. a DNA thing. Well, so, so he's known for a long time, right? He's got the DNA proof right there with him. Okay, can I mention one other detail about the fucking apocalypse? Because every single one of these movies does something ridiculous like this. Please do. I wish you would, please. There was a run on the banks is the other big thing that's happened in, yeah. I guess, just uh -huh. these 15 cities where everyone or almost everyone was poisoned and had a crazy fever that sent them into a murderous rage. But also... Those people were like, we should stop at the local branch and just take out some cash for, <laughs> yeah, I was, for the murderous orgy of violence that we're going to do. You want to have cash for that, right? Yeah. I was picturing like a bunch of fast zombies from 28 days later just waiting in line at the ATM. <laughs> Rrr, am I right? Oh, my God. Totally. Rrr. Thank you for saying it. Honestly. So, Rrr, weather don't I'm done we just we did the exchange <laughs> so, don't do your pin backwards I'm not attacking you I know we're all zombies so it seems like I might attack hey, do, uh, just go ahead do it regular that doesn't do anything just so you know that, do, that, that doesn't do anything nothing. That's, no, just, no, that's just not wrong real. that's just not, not your pin not wow. a real thing <laughs> so then the dad is like you know how dare you come into my uh, my house and, and claim that my son is your son and, and the detective the cop starts talking all kinds of shit to the dad and I'm like this is the wrong time man <laughs> yeah. what a weird time for a Tom roast Just like, <laughs> you succulent piece of garbage one <laughs> finger on the pulse of death is the sands of time Wait, hey man there's like four minutes left in all of existence maybe get your kicks in later yeah Right. And seriously, long lost father's like, they're yelling at each other like Tom. And he's like, <clears throat> just um, let me see my real son real quick. I just want to go upstairs or whatever. <laughs> go see him. Yeah. It's it's actually crazier than I want to go upstairs. It is. I will teach him basketball. Right. Right now. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. And then and then <laughs> and then dad's like, I'm going to teach teach him better sports right now. Whatever. <laughs> better than you. I'm the real dad. I will need to do that. Yeah. And then there's a dad standoff. Flash cut to them just like tossing various balls from various sports at the kid on the ground. <laughs> huh? Huh? Are we having fun, son? No, we're having fun. Yeah. Do you like bowling? bowling ball. Shit. That was a bad one. I shouldn't have done bowling. Okay. I think we all learned something. I wanted so badly for like 
a knock on the door and a guy's there for the daughter and then another guy's there for Junior. Ooh. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, nice the apocalypse anyway. So yeah, so, so dad steps into the other room. Oh, we find out that everybody in the family knew that Evan wasn't really his kid except for him, right? The, the, his daughter and his other son, Junior, knew. Yeah, the mother and the daughter are doing laundry together, you know, and it's like, oh, do you know, actually, you don't need the fill it up to the max line. It's actually just like two tablespoons is fine. Also, I cheated on your father and Evan is not his child. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Something like that occurred at some point. It's actually Darth Vader. It's not a big deal. <laughs> he walks into the other room and he starts crying that the daughter follows him in. He starts flashing back to earlier in the movie, which is the fat lady singing of Gam, right? Let's be mm -hmm. honest. <laughs> And he's like, all right, all right, there's only 10 minutes left on the clock. I'm going to go murder the shit out of that dude, out of that new character that we just introduced. Well, he's driven into a rage because he he finds this man shaking his son's hand. Shaking his hand, yeah. damn it. Yeah, uh-huh. Right. And then we have the craziest dad versus dad standoff the best. that I can imagine. So they get mad at each other. And they confront each other and they're standing face to face. And the kid walks in to the middle of the room. And they both immediately are like, come here, son. No, come here, son. Like yeah. the dog thing. Like yep. you were they like, do if the dog the... goes to me, then it's my dog. <laughs> and they do that. Like as if they agree to it. They're both like, this decides who's the father for, well, you know, the next eight minutes of existence. We we agree on that? Right, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, one, two, three, go. Well, and, and keep in mind that they both have guns, like, pointed at each other at the time. The kid is in the middle, in between them, right? <laughs> if Solomon showed up and tried to solve this problem, they'd argue over which of them got the bigger half. <laughs> This is insane. Yep. But the but the kid ultimately the the, the dad puts uh, Clarence puts down his shotgun and the kid goes to him and he's like, "This is my dad. I know how good his barbecue <laughs> is. I don't know about you yet." So kid just rips himself in half, goes half to each one. All right, what a, this is did not expect That's that. Terrible. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so so but but the detective guy, the cop guy, is he loses it. So he just starts shooting. Her mom. I, at first I wrote dives in front of the bullet, but that's an overstatement, right? Because nope. like very clearly the director's like, so you're going to dive in front of the bullets. And she's like, oh, so you've got some mattresses or something for me to jump on. And she's like, she, I got some, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so she strafes, I shuffles in front of the bullet. I don't know how to describe <laughs> it exactly. But anyway, so, so she gets shot. Dad shoots the detective. The detective shoots back, accidentally shoots Crystal in the head and kills her, the pregnant daughter. Junior also, Junior just walks in the room and somebody shoots him to death, right? Like in sort of a, hey, you guys want to resolve my storyline too? Kind of I feel way. like they both shot him. Junior walked in, they were like, get the fuck out. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, back to, <laughs> back to what we were doing. I can get away with this now. Yeah, right. Junior, come here. Junior, come to me. We both shot him. We both shot him. That's not going to work. <laughs> <So> <laughs> So, but yeah, but so now everybody's been shot. Uh, Clarence has been shot. The detective has been shot. It's my favorite part of the movie. The, to, there's no words for how funny <laughs> that part of the movie is. Well, because it's just every named character walks in the room one after the other and somebody shoots them for no <laughs> reason. I wanted Glenn to pop out of a potted plant and be like, I'm sorry, but so what you say. <laughs> All of the reservoir dogs are walking in. They're shooting each other. Okay, okay. All right, well, huh. Yeah, so and here's here's this. Can we talk about the charm necklace? The oh yes, yeah. Oh, necklace? I love the charm necklace. So I don't even much. understand yeah. what happened. Yeah, I would love to talk about that. Here's what was in the stage directions. Clarence kneels down and notices that his wife and the cop both had matching charm necklaces, except the actors two fell fell too far apart. So Clarence kneels down <laughs> and he's like, "I I actually can't. Do you guys mind scooching?" Can I drag these? Can I drag the... these two actors slightly closer together so it's obvious that they he have pulls... matching halves of he... the broken heart? So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he shoots them again. Oh, I didn't get any of that. I thought he he leans down, and I was like, "Is he gonna lick up some blood oh, right Jesus now?" Christ! <laughs> well, from each of them separately, what's <laughs> happening? So. Okay, he wants a necklace. Nope, he just wanted to look at it for a second. He puts it back down, but you're saying he then looked at the other one to like 
see the two were the same. Yeah, he like tries to line them up so that you can tell. See, I'm looking at both of these two items right here. He does he does his best. This actor really does his best. So then he goes outside. He looks outside to see the sweet after effects they got out there. And this time, correct me if I'm wrong, it's just missile command. Yep. Right, like there's bad graphics and then there's just trying to pass missile command off as your fucking background. Well, screensaver yeah. fish comes across the sky. Damn it. We <laughs> <laughs> <Free> shoot. <laughs> Right. So there's like two things happening. There's the like Illuminati poisoned 15 cities and there's craziness because of the fevers and the orgies of violence, giant massacres. And we're also now watching like God sending fireworks and missiles from the sky and stars and moons falling in like a magical apocalypse thing at the same time. No, this is all VOTV. They're all they've hacked into the clouds. They've hacked into the fireworks. And they're doing all of this. Oh, this is, that's about to be revealed. Oh, okay. So like the guy standing outside of Home Depot knows how to do like cloud rainbow magic. Cloud shit magic. Yeah, he's doing a little missiles. cloud hacking. Well, so I think, believe it or not, I think that the cloud rainbow thing is supposed to just be a coincidental supercharged electrical rainbow storm. <laughs> oh, okay. I like, Spoilers, okay. Noah. I love the idea that the God of the universe and the Illuminati just like ran their things on the same day by accident. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh shit, you're doing, all right, I guess it's a freebie. We can People just, aren't even going to notice our thing. <laughs> we kind of started it 30 days ago, man. Like we kind of called, man, I'm just saying. <laughs> Swordmouth Jesus is just standing there at the top of the hill. Okay, well, this is bullshit. <laughs> the hot and light <laughs> <water dome. laughs> They're all inside. This fucks it all. All up. our computers so are down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fuck. I there was no calendars at the how about one second, let me get my Google calendar. <laughs> so, right. We could share calendars. Can we right? end the world? Well, I haven't shared it with I gotta you. sign out and I gotta <laughs> sign out and sign in under a different address. Hold on. God, make me an editor. God <laughs> at Gmail. <laughs> The God, the God one. No, that's the password. That's the password. Fuck. So, so meanwhile, Evan is looking at the six-year-old kid. He's looking at him like, well, that that seems an unnecessarily violent ending to this film, right? <laughs> and Dad sits down to wrap things up with him. He's gonna opine on. He's gonna put a bow on this film now that it's it's wrapping up, and he's gonna opine on the importance of family to his son. Yeah, like he's cementing. That game from earlier. He's like, hey, buddy, I'm your father. You came to me when I called. That's official. So that's locked in. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Locked in. <laughs> and the, the kid's like, I love you. I don't know how to talk to you right now. That was crazy what you just said. <laughs> You're my dad. Well, and then there's this whole long like, is dad going to shoot Evan? Dad's going to shoot Evan. Why is dad going to shoot Evan? Right. There's this whole long moment where they're like, oh, is he, he's going to just do a murder suicide quick before the clock can reach zero. Right. And then, of course, just as he, the clock reaches zero, we cut away. We hear a gunshot. Did he? Didn't he? No, he he didn't. We'll find out in a second. No. But before we do, we cut back to the TV, and VOTV has a little like a little montage about how they are among us everywhere, or something. They did a ninety minute countdown to a commercial for themselves. For them, <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh. laughs> I mean, look, I've seen dumber Super Bowl commercials, but that was pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, that's true. And this is where I think it's important to reveal the countdown of this movie is to nothing. Yes. <laughs> Keith, again, we talked about this movie last night. He then watched it again and he was like, hey, does something happen at the end of the countdown? And it took all my human strength <laughs> not to be like, no. No, <laughs> no it does not. No. It doesn't. That's actually a really funny prank. If you can hack everybody's device in the world and put a countdown that is to nothing, that would fuck us up. That fucking that sounds great. Well, that's the that's the whole idea of the movie, right? The like the, the countdown just brought out the evil that was already inside them and everybody thinking that the world was gonna end, you know, did violence to each other or whatever. Oh, that that shit. was that's is is this a good movie? With no, idea? it's That's not. No, it's a really stupid fucking it's movie a because great because movie. again, it requires us to believe that VOTV hacked into the goddamn clouds and the attack helicopters. Mm -hmm. Right. Listen, they had chemists, scripts, bloods, teachers, engineers. They did have chemists. Yeah, yeah. And to prove this, right, Marcos 
sneaks into the basement now. And this is when he runs over to the dad and he's like, it was all fake. So to be clear, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but to be clear, someone just yelled, poison attack and everyone on earth started murdering each yes. other yeah that's the idea of the film yes exactly <laughs> but before marcus can get there we have to talk about the least believable aspect of this entire movie this is a movie where they hack into clouds folks after the countdown ends what happened with the lottery exactly the loose end that we all want to tie it up the countdown ends. It goes back to regular TV. It's still Todd Williams. He's still got his energy. He kept it up for that whole 90 <laughs> minutes somehow. And we get the lottery drawing, and it turns out that dad did win the billion-dollar jackpot. Okay. The only plot point in the movie less relevant than cop who comes to claim his son for six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My favorite part of this is that the Illuminati had hacked every TV but then somehow the lotto thing came back on, like interrupting them. So that's fan like, I love the idea that network execs cut off <laughs> the Illuminati thing. And they're like, we're, we're going back to the, the lotto. We, I don't know what was happening there. We get, we get <laughs> just press the very good, very good draw numbers on that. So Todd Williams, he was really killing it. I feel like we want to keep <laughs> his momentum up if we can. But yeah, so dad celebrates and he celebrates so hard that he, I can't tell if he's supposed to have shot himself additionally or if he has a heart attack or if it's just the multiple bullet wounds in his stomach that are getting him here. <laughs> but at any rate, so like he he celebrates so hard he starts to die. Mm -hmm. Right. Marcos, this is where Marcos sneaks in and he's like, you know, it's it's all over. It's all over. I'm like, yeah, the clock running out was a dead giveaway, Marcos. No, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, we've been clicking pause to see the time left in the movie this entire time. <laughs> Way ahead of you, Marcos. Like every eight seconds at this point. Marcos explains that no, there was no poison attack. It was all a prank war. And then that's when he finds out Crystal is dead. And we learn that he is not as into this role as Clarence is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Chris, Crystal. So dad goes to walk outside and Marcos is like, oh, don't do that. They'll shoot you and kill you. And he's like, really? Because you said it's over and it was all a prank. And he's like, yeah, well, not in the sense that they won't still kill you, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Clarence, yeah, <laughs> you live in L.A. I mean, yeah, well, that's true. No, that's you fair. You need that's it fair. to be it's martial anytime. law to die. Yeah. You know, it's just, right. You know. And so he, he steps out. He goes to the porch where he's about to do the, we're going to catch up with the beginning of the movie. But first, he's got to give the billion dollar lottery ticket to Evan. You know, he's like, at least you can die a billionaire, I guess, or whatever. Cool. Weird sequel to Blank Check. Yeah. Really love that. I'm going to be a billionaire right when the entire economy collapses. All right. That'll <laughs> be great. great. Thanks, Dad. That'll be great. Can I can I go back and run to the other guy? Is he? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, and then he walks out on the porch. He's like, oh, it's just like I dreamed. And I'm like, was the teaser at the beginning him dreaming? Because this is all going to turn out to have been a dream. So that would have to be him dreaming that he dreamed <laughs> this. The dream. The dream. Yes. <laughs> But I guess now he's he's gone out to his porch to commit suicide by cop, right? He's going to come at them with the shotgun. To be clear, he's already shot and dying. Yes. It feels weird to be like, well, I, this could take minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, they used the movie's whole squib budget in this scene, right? They sure the do. cops shoot him like six times. Very dramatic. Also, one of my favorite things, this belongs on a Christian movie bingo card somewhere for sure. The actor who has never had squibs on their body moment where the actor's like, yes, here, owie, ow, yeah. ow, <laughs> ow, <laughs> ow, so, hot. And then, and then Clarence wakes up. He's on his moon boot inversion thing or whatever. This whole movie was a dream. Except, except the daughter is pregnant. And Evan's biological father did jealously watch him teach the kid basketball. Like, like you can't, you have to put, like, those all happened before the moon boot scene. You have to keep all your dream shit on the same side of the movie. <laughs> the movie. <laughs> he would have had to psychically dream so much of this shit. <laughs> Anyway, and then and then the fucking evangelist, which, by the way, showed up before he did the moon boot thing. Yeah. Right. They so they've just yep. walked around the block and come back to give him another go, apparently. 
the older guy, he has pretty bad Alzheimer's. He just stay walking around. <laughs> oh, no. He does the same house six or seven times till he tuckers <laughs> himself like, humor, out. You just humor him. <laughs> Come on. Right. And to be clear, he had that, you know, sweet heart attack dream. So all that happened. And now he's supposed to be like very receptive yes. to the Jehovah's Witnesses right. because he like learned a lesson. Now he's like, come right in. I'd like to hear about Jehovah. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you know what? Pascal's wager. We'll toss in the J-dubs. Cool. Right. Here's the thing, though. If you die of blood loss from a bullet wound in a dream, maybe J-dubs aren't the one for you. <laughs> just, <laughs> definitely not for you. Definitely not for you. No. You didn't take the right lesson <laughs> oh, from your Jesus dream. Christ. All right. I don't want to say any more words because there's no way I'm going to have a better joke than that to end on. So that's going to do it for our review of Lockdown 2025. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to fall back into this pit next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, gents, as you may have noticed in your calendar, next week's episode is our Valentine's Day Tacular. Oh, God damn it. All right, fine. So we'll be watching love, but not just love for each other, love for the universe. Yes, we'll be watching The Secret <gasps> Dare to Dream. Oh, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that to legitimately look forward to, we're going to bring episode 390 to Merciful Close. Once again, huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make this show go. If you'd like to cut yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on your early various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rance, Lightning, and Jeff on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Wright and Eli Bostic, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder and another chunk this week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Evan, the six year old son, went on to be told, Go fuck yourself on his seventh birthday. <laughs> Clarence did not win the lot. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses have a website full of their movies. <laughs> oh, there's more of these. <laughs>